Hey everybody, in this video, we'll continue to look at some example problems involving volumes with known cross-sections. First, let's quickly review the big idea. Remember, dV is the volume of a single cross-section, which is the area of the cross-section times the width, dx. So the volume of the entire solid is the integral from a to b of a of x dx. Example one, semicircle cross-sections. The region between f of x equals radical x and g of x equals x squared forms the base of a solid. Cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis are semicircles. Set up the integral that represents the volume of the solid. So the first thing we need to do is find an equation for the area of a semicircle in terms of its side. So the side of our semicircle is f of x minus g of x. That means the radius is one half f of x minus g of x. Now we know that the area of a semicircle is pi r squared over two. So we can make the substitution for r into this equation. And that gives us the following a of x equation. If we simplify this, we get pi over eight times the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared. Now we can write dv, which is pi over eight times the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared dx. That means the volume of a solid with semicircle cross sections is pi over eight times the integral from a to b of the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared dx. So now we can write the integral that represents the volume of the solid of our original problem, and that's pi over eight times the integral from zero to one of the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared dx. Example two, equilateral triangle cross sections. So in this example, we'll use the same region as the previous example to form the base of a solid. But now cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are equilateral triangles. Set up the integral that represents the volume of the solid. In order to solve this, we need to find an equation that gives us the area of an equilateral triangle in terms of its side. So here's a diagram of an equilateral triangle. Now we know that the area is one half base times height. And we know that the base is S, which stands for side but now we just need to find the height. Using properties of 30, 60, 90 triangles, we can determine that the height is 1 half S root three. That means the area is 1 half S times the height, which is S root three over two. And this gives us root three over four S squared. Now we have the information we need to solve the problem. We can write A of X, which is root three over four times the quantity of F of X minus G of X squared because f of x minus g of x is the side of this triangle. That means dv equals root three over four times the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared dx. That means the volume of the solid is root three over four times the integral from a to b of the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared dx. And back to our original problem, the volume of the solid is then root three over four times the integral from zero to one of the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared dx. Let's do one more example. This one involves isosceles right triangle cross sections. We'll use the same base as last time, but this time cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are isosceles right triangles with the hypotenuse on the base. So what we need to do is find an equation for the area of this triangle in terms of its side, which in this case is the hypotenuse. We know that the area of a triangle is one half base times the height, and the base is S. And after doing a little bit of geometry, we can see that the height of this triangle is one half S. So the area of this triangle is one half S times one half S, which is one fourth S squared. Now we can write the a of x equation, which is one fourth times the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared. And we know that dv equals a of x dx. That means the volume of the solid is one fourth times the integral from a to b of the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared dx. And back to our original problem, this means that the volume is one fourth times the integral from zero to one of the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared dx. With all of these problems, we've needed to find formulas that give us area in terms of side for the specific cross section. Here's a chart that you can reference, which has area formulas for several common shapes. Note that many of them contain s squared and are just multiplied by constants. 
I hope you're now starting to feel more comfortable with these types of problems. Just keep on practicing. And that's how you rock! Cow